BPA can be found in all types of plastics from water bottles to food containers um, to metal equi medical equipment, toys. Due to the science that has been done on BPA, the public was starting to demand BPA-free products. The only problem is manufacturing companies can switch one chemical out that's been deemed by science and by the public and by policy as being hazardous to human health and should be avoided. And you can replace it with various unknown or very uh, untested products. They replaced it with essentially the same chemical, just kind of like slightly altered, and it either has the same effects or worse effects. Currently only BPA is actually being regulated, which is why we now have these BPA-free products, but we need to really understand the toxicity and the effects that these alternatives have. We look at BPA alternatives on human stem cells, on rat stem cells, and then on chick embryos. BPA um, and these kind of BPA alternatives have been associated with obesity and obesity-related illness. Reproductive and developmental defects, apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. A lot of our research is going to get published in the future. This program is very special because not a lot of undergraduate students get to work with a mentor and learn all these different techniques, so I'm feeling like I'm getting a really great advantage before I go into graduate school. Giving talks, doing science, being an author on publications, those things are really valuable for their next steps after St. Mary's. All of my previous research students have gone on to do exactly what they set out to do, and that is 100% of them that applied to med school got into med school. 100% of them applied to nursing or PT programs got into those programs. And then the ones that went on to graduate programs went on to those master's and PhD graduate programs. So I really feel like doing the hands-on research and the level of effort that we all put into it, it really bears fruit for them.